Hello and welcome uh, to the Dr. Mumbi Show. My name is Dr. Mumbi Saraki. How are you doing? How's everything going? I really do pray that you are well, fam, in all your ways, and that you are living your best life. Thanks to every single person that has supported us on our Patreon account. Go ahead and consider uh, joining our Patreon for as little as, you know, $2 a month, uh, which is 200 Kenya shillings. And thanks to everyone um, that has donated to us through our PayPal. Uh, we really appreciate, love each and every one of you. We will be telling you what we used uh, some of these funds for, but I just want to give a special shout out to Unjaku Jehovah um, Sunflowers, UK Limited. Hey, what's up? Uh, Andrea Green, uh, Project Exodus Media, uh, Samali Waisiwa, um, Alfred Sims, Alexandra T, and many, many others. Those are just some of the few, but many, many others who have supported us. Um, we really appreciate you, Felicia Clay, uh, Victor Odesenia, uh, Caroline Ford, our long, long time supporter. Thank you so much. Doran Tate, our long, long time supporter. Randolph Schillinger. I don't even know if these are the official names if you people use or because I know everyone has a code name. If you guys knew my original name, you'd be like, what? Anyway, that's not why we're here. Uh, definitely consider subscribing to both the Dr. Mumbi Show and the Dr. Mumbi Live. You know, we've been talking about uh, Madagascar. They've come out with their COVID organics and they've received so much, um, you know, opposition and backlash because... What we've seen is that any African intellectual thing, any African discovery, they always want to whitewash it. And if you go do your research, you will see so many, nearly everything was invest, invented by black people, by the way. But every time it's just eroded from us. And so they were not planning for an African nation, any African nation, to come up with a cure so quickly and then be bold enough to manufacture it. And that's exactly what Madagascar's president has been doing. And another thing is, you know, and he promoted it. He's, it's flowing all over, you know, in the schools, everywhere. Uh, Madagascar has not even had one death from COVID-19. They've had a lot of, um, a high number of recoveries. And we saw, you know, there's so much politics around this because Senegal was the first country to congratulate Madagascar. And then the, you know, Mad the Madagascar president actually uh, released a tweet where he said that Senegal had become the first country to order a large batch of the COVID-19, of the COVID organics. And then and because of the pressure, I'm telling you, fam, our presidents are not their own people. The president actually, you know, there's a source close to the Senegalese government that actually backtracked and said, no, 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 uh, we haven't ordered any of the COVID organic. Oh, no. You know, we're waiting for WHO's, you know, the, the we're observing WHO's vaccine procedure and we're observing closely, you know, what's going to happen with COVID organics. Meanwhile, Germany, divided states, and one of the Scandinavian countries, I think it's Denmark, is already in Madagascar researching, trying to see if this thing works. But our people are so controlled that they can't do that. I mean, this is why Africa, we got to change, man. we got to change this thing up because it doesn't make any sense at all that Senegal would feel the pressure to actually go against their own sovereign decision, whether they had ordered it or not, to now backtrack is not a is not a good thing and this shows you that everything is controlled fam and so for the people who are still have rose colored glasses on to the people who still are in some kind of la la land thinking oh you know because i heard the ghanaian president saying oh what a one day it would be if ghana invent if got the vaccine like you know you know that's not the plan in this pandemic and, you know, the least, the least our governments could be doing, the least our governments could be doing was, would be to actually be studying, to getting this information themselves and actually studying whether COVID organics were getting their own scientists instead of listening to the international organizations. Because you see, what has happened is the World Health Organization, the United Nations, it's a community of nations, which means every nation has an equal vote. If Africa was united, they'd have the majority vote every time. And, you know, sometimes that's why you see there's so much uh, divide and conquer that goes on, so stories for other days. But instead, what has happened is these organizations are now governing bodies, where is a sovereign king, that's why we should look up these presidents, will say, like Madagascar president will say, we've gotten the cure. Instead of the WHO getting that cure and researching it, and now all of that information has been banned on so many platforms, you know, where you can't talk about any of the cures or whatever, you know, they say they want to keep us safe, like we're not adults who can think for ourselves, and people will be like, yes, 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 it's good to control, you know. 
But instead of our own people checking, instead of like, um, and this is the Madagascar president, this is what he said, instead of the WHO, which is supposed to be serving the nations, getting that, you know, a consignment of COVID organics and having other, they're not even in a position to do it. But instead of listening to the, gov the governments, they are dictating to governments. And they have been taken over by these technocrats who have an idea, they have an agenda for this vaccine. And they are going to roll it out whether people know the truth or not. So that's why I keep saying it's a time for everyone to be an adult fam. And it's time for you to do what you need to do to protect yourself and protect your family. All the information is out there. School yourself. Because now I've been seeing some, you know, some articles about how, uh, in fact, well, I'll attach it to this video, how um, a lot of the laws are changing um, in the divided kingdom and elsewhere. I think also Nigeria are changing their laws, which is to now include forced vaccination. So we need to keep an eye out for this. These are the end of days, fam. Babylon must fall, but Babylon is not going to fall without trying to take as many of you with down with it. So stay alert, stay awakened, stay uplifted. Until next time. I want our children to liberate their minds, to liberate their minds from this receivership mentality aid dependent mentality that somebody else has to come to Africa to solve our problems. That's not what I see in Asia. I've spent 20, over 20 years now in the development field. The last 20 years going to Asia. When I go to Asia, I don't see a depressed Asia. I don't see Asians waiting for somebody to come, give them aid to solve their problem. No way. I see Asians thinking competitiveness, technology transfer, trade, and they're, they're ready to be creative to compete. We are not the only ones who had conflict. Cambodia had conflict. Vietnam had conflict. In fact, in the 60s and, and, and mid-70s, they were referring to Cambodia, Vietnam, Laos, and others as basket cases. They recovered. They transformed. And today, yes, they're self-sufficient in food production. They're major industrial hubs for producing goods and services which are bought by uh, uh, OECD, rich OECD countries. What am I saying? None of us are destined to be poor. No nation is destined to have disease, disasters, and death only. It depends on the creativity and the determination of their people. And for us, the difference between us and many Asian countries is that God gave us everything. And you heard me talk about the Garden of Eden syndrome. And that is not from me. That's from Ali Mazrui back in 81. Because somehow, because God gave us everything, Every season something grows, and the minerals are everywhere. My country, they just discovered the, one of the largest pieces of diamond ever in the world, 706 carats. They just discovered it last week. God gave us everything. So somehow it seems our creativity died. Somehow it seems we are not as aggressive and ambitious as we're supposed to be. I want us, I want our children, since we may have failed them with all these isms you mentioned, yeah? I want our children to believe that they can be a Bill Gates. I want them to believe that with all this God-given wealth, oil and gas, bauxite, iron ore, titanium, you name it, that in fact they can capture this 21st century. They're good as anybody. If I can leave poor Sierra Leone, that has been ranked at the bottom of the heap for almost three decades, we're amongst the five poorest, the, back in 2008, we were the poorest of the poor, the lowest human development index. If I can defy that, and go to such a level globally. It means any kid can do it. And I don't want anybody making our kids depressed, less creative. That's why I chose that topic. And Ghana, in particular, is a good choice. Because you have led the way in many things. Your vision, in fact, of Kwame Nkrumah was 50 years before he's, you know, ahead of time. But Ghana is in a position today uh, with your newfound wealth of oil and gas and your strong agricultural base to say, fine, we show the rest of Africa what it means to be successful. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up.